Silent Hill is a staple in the horror genre and a fantastically atmospheric and thought-provoking game for its time. The game came out in 1999, and it's fucking awesome. This game is wonderful. The atmosphere is spot on, the characters are interesting, and the music is chilling. The game looks like it was made out of clay and pixels, right? But it's horrifying. It pulled me in, and at times it was like I was there. It was wonderful. I haven't played a game like this in a long time. Cheryl! You play as Harry Mason, who crashes his car upon arrival at Silent Hill and loses his daughter. Our motivation is to find her, find Cheryl. Personally, I really like this streamlined introduction to the story, and it was enough for me to feel like what I was doing was justified. As the game starts, you're introduced to this town with a thick and foreboding layer of fog covering our vision after five or six feet, and initially, it's very ominous and the town feels weird and unknown. As we continue on, it becomes more clear that the monsters we encounter aren't where the horror to this game truly lies. This is a game that digs at your brain, and it begs more questions than it answers. It bears great symbolism, and it has its own strong themes. It takes its success from books and from film, and goes in an entirely different direction than games like Resident Evil that went for more of a B-horror movie feel. Oh, Barry! That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right! It's another one of those games that's like an iceberg. And I'm the fucking Titanic. There's so much under the surface of this game, it requires more than just one playthrough to truly understand everything. And even at that, questions are still left unanswered. In Silent Hill, the main character is very much the town itself, shrouded in mystery and taking the fears of its protagonists and turning them into horrifying monstrosity. In many cases, Silent Hill itself can very well be you. It can be Alessa or James or Heather all in one. It can be many things in many places all at once. With all that being said, I'd like to revise my last rating on Layers of Fear to a 7 out of 10 and give this game a 9 out of 10. I most definitely will be playing this game again, thoroughly recommend it, and really want to continue in this game series, being a very big horror fan myself. Now I want to discuss the symbolism of the game, as there's a good amount. I like to think that the fog represents both ours and Harry's knowledge of the town of Silent Hill. It's shrouded in mystery, and eerily obscure. The monsters all represent the fears of Alessa, a major character throughout the game. But you already knew that, didn't you? For example, the knife-wielding children, mumblers outside of America, represent the other children that were rude to her in school. The groaners represent her fear of large dog. The larval stalkers represent Alessa and the way she felt as a child. I've heard people think these things were cute, but they creeped me out. I had no fucking clue what they were. The nurses and doctors all have large growths on their back, representing the way that they were controlled by the cult of the town. And the sound the male doctors made fucking gets to me. Just... Rompers represent Alessa's dislike of adults and how forceful they can be. Many other monsters are just representative of any child's fear of insects. Cheryl represents Alessa herself and is the half of her that she wants to live a normal life, as she was forced to live through horrible burns for several years and kept alive by Dahlia and the cult. The dynamic between Harry and other characters is interesting, and the good plus ending implies that Sybil and Harry end up together, but the interactions between Harry and Lisa felt more genuine and interesting, like the characters connected well. So what we have from my understanding is this. Harry and Cheryl travel to visit Silent Hill because Alessa had summoned Cheryl so she could become one again and end her life so she could stop her constant suffering at the hands of Dahlia Gillespie. It was Alessa that Harry nearly hits in his car at the opening of the game. We then spend the rest of the game trying to find her and slowly unraveling the story and learning of Alessa's past and how she was impregnated with Samael and could not give birth to him because she was split into two people. The game has themes of psychology, existentialism, and the dangers of religious radicalism as well as the lengths someone would go to to take care of someone that truly matters to them. The game has four endings and if I'm not mistaken, a joke ending that takes a bit of jumping through hoops to get to. Supposedly, only one of the endings is canon, as it results in the events of the third game eventually, and with an ending that'll leave you saying, What? What the fuck? What? What? Why? Wait, how are Wait, what? What are you- So many questions! You guys are looking pretty good. <laughs> I'll see you next time.